Yes, what's going on people? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Chelsea news video. First things first, guys, make sure you smash the likes, 100 like target as always on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And yeah, there's not been too much going on over the last day or so, we've had a bit more news today, certainly enough to do a video. And in today's video, we're going to be covering uh, Jamal Musiala and Chelsea set for a serious windfall this summer if he leaves Bayern Munich. Got the latest from Ian Martin as well, revealing that his plan was to stay at Chelsea this season. And we've got news that the Blues are tracking young left-backs for this summer. If only we had Ian Martin or Lewis Hall on our books, maybe things would be a bit different, eh? But let's dive into it. And let's start with the Jamal Musiala news then. And it's always, he's one of those where, uh, players that, you know, been at the Chelsea Academy... Uh, we offered him a deal. He wanted to. He wanted to go. He went to Munich, and he's always been one of those that you know Chelsea fans would love to have back. And there's been a report in the Daily Mail today saying that Chelsea are set for a serious win for the Bayern Munich sell Jamal Musiala this summer. A 20% sell-on clause is believed to be inserted in the contract. Now there is obviously no buyback clause, uh, but there is a sell-on clause, and Musiala has been linked with a big move away from Bayern Munich, £80 million, uh, you know, with Liverpool and Manchester City said to be interested. Obviously, he left Chelsea at 16 and joined Bayern. I think the compensation at the time wasn't a lot. I think it was about 170 grand, not even 200k. Uh, but there is a 20% sell-on clause included. So Chelsea could be set for some serious cash if if, if Musiala does leave, his current contract at Bayern expires in 2026. So, you know, clubs are now starting to circle uh, because Bayern haven't yet agreed an extension with him yet. So it's, def it's definitely one to monitor, 100% one to monitor. So obviously, let let's take this at face value. If Musiala was to be sold for £80 million, then the Blues would be set for a whopping £16 million from that transaction. And that could certainly help in, a, in our bid to uh, satisfy the Premier League's profit and sustainability rules, even if it were to be paid in instalments. So, yeah, there, there, there are certainly uh, some legs there. I mean, obviously, the Blues have been linked with a, with a move for Musiala as well. Uh, you know, he's, of course, he's the ideal age uh, for our recruitment strategy of signing young players. Um, and actually, Pochettino previously has said that you know he's one of the best young players in the world alongside Pedri and Gavi and Chelsea will of course continue to monitor the situation now it's really important to stress guys that because I know a lot of people think that Chelsea didn't want Musiala to stay when he left he at Chelsea absolutely did want him to stay um a contract was offered but he wanted to go to Germany and go on, a, and go on a, a different adventure. So I just want to make that perfectly clear. Chelsea did do everything they could to try and keep him, but Musiala wanted to go. In terms of a move for Musiala himself from Chelsea, would that make sense? You know, we're obviously very well stocked in those in that attacking midfield number 10 area. Uh, and particularly now with uh, Christopher Nkunku and Carney Chukwameka, it means we've got a lot more options there. So if we were going to make a big move for a Musiala or a Florian Verts or, or a Xavi Simmons, then someone would need to be moved on. Uh, it's not as simple as, oh, let's go and sign another attacking player. If we're going to be spending that sort of big money, which I don't think we need to do, but someone would need to be moved on uh, from those attacking midfield positions. You've got Nkunku, you've got Chukwameka, you've got Mudrik, um, you know, you've got Mudaweke, etc., you know, there are a lot of options we've got there. Uh, Raheem Sterling's kind of the obvious one, but I wouldn't say Musiala and Sterling are like for like as players. Uh, absolutely not. But a move for Musiala, you know, as great as it would be, if, if you're talking of £80 million upwards for him, then, yeah, it's... For me, I think we can put that, that, that those funds to better use elsewhere to strengthen areas of the pitch that really, really need strengthening. That would be a luxury signing and one that, for me... As much as I'd love it, it's not a priority. You know, we need a centre forward uh, it, desperately. So that, that's got to be the main priority uh, this summer. But yeah, guys, do let me know your thoughts in the comments on a possible return for Musiala. Would that be something that excites you? Do you think it makes sense? Um, please do let me know. But yeah, the good thing is that, and one thing I would say, you, know, you can criticise Chelsea for a lot of things. I know this is obviously nothing to do with the current ownership, but we are very, very good at selling players, whether it's just pure sales or whether it's selling younger players, 
and making sure that we have a sell-on clause in there so that we can benefit down the line. Exactly like we did with Tino Livramento. There was a big sell-on clause in that one. And, and we benefited handsomely from his move to Newcastle. It's great to see that we could benefit again from, from Musiala's move. So, yeah, we do sell young players. And yes, I don't think people like it when we sell players from the academy. But we do do smart business when we do it. And I think the club, you know, it's coming for a lot of criticism over the, uh, you know, recently and over the years in general. One thing you can't criticise them for is smart business in terms of player sales. So credit where it's due again on this one. And the Blues could be set for a windfall. Um, Let's, let's move it on then from Musiala to Ian Martson. An interview in The Guardian today coming out from Ian Martson. You know, some comments about his time in Dortmund so far. Uh, he's doing well there. He was named the Bundesliga Rookie of the Month uh, for January. He's putting in some good performances there. I don't think we're going to have any problems uh, with his £35 million release clause being activated this summer. But he's been he has revealed that actually his plan was to stay at Chelsea. In the interview, he said, my plan was to stay at Chelsea. I've done my loan spells. Obviously, he was on loan at Coventry City. He was on loan at Burnley last season where he made the championship team of the season. He was exceptional as Vincent Company's side obviously won the league. Uh, and, you know, he turned down a move back to Burnley even uh, last summer, even though the two clubs had agreed a fee uh, for him. So he said, my plan was to stay at Chelsea. I've done my loan spells. I thought I was ready to compete for the big clubs, but sometimes football works like this. I didn't get a lot of opportunities. It's not the end of the world, but you have to be ready. You always have to believe because football can go quickly. Now, a lot of people are unhappy that Martin was moved on, given the situation uh, the club find themselves in with left backs. Obviously, Kukurea has been injured for last parts of the season. Cole, uh, Chilwell can't keep himself fit. Levi Cole was being played out of position despite having Ian Martin on the books. But what I would say is that I absolutely agree he should have been given an opportunity, particularly when you hear that Chelsea are in the market for a left back this summer. They're monitoring young left backs. I'm thinking there's two on the books. Well, we had two on the books and and <coughs> excuse me. And and we're choosing not to use them. You can almost guarantee, right, that if Ian Martin was nothing to do with Chelsea and he was playing how he was playing right now at Dortmund, he's 22 years of age, he fits the profile, Chelsea would absolutely be interested in signing him this summer, which yeah, kind of makes a little bit of a mockery of what we're doing. I think he should have been given an opportunity, absolutely. Am I saying he's some sort of world beater and a top, top player? No, I'm not saying that. But I think he should have at least been given a chance. Look, for me personally, I don't feel that he was he's good enough for Chelsea or, or certainly to, to be a Malo Gusto of the left-hand side. I, I don't believe that to be the case, but I don't know who is that guy for the left-hand side. But it is interesting that, you know, Martin, having done his loan spells, really felt that, you know, he could give it a good crack at Chelsea. And it just became apparent that, you know, Pochettino wasn't going to use him. You know, he featured prominently in pre-season in that more advanced role. Um, but then when it came to the Premier League season, you know, that obviously convinced him to stay in the summer. Um, but yeah, you know, he, he made a few substitute appearances playing, you know, wide in, in, in the attacking three behind the striker. Very sparingly was he used at left back. Um, despite Levi Cole struggling and being played out of position. He still wasn't given a chance. Met Pochettino, obviously not a fan of him at left back. Uh, perhaps it's his lack of height or lack of physicality. I'm not sure what it is. He made his, obviously, his full debut, his first start in the game after Christmas against Crystal Palace, and he was deployed on the right wing. Um, so, yeah, it's it obviously didn't work out for him. I know a lot of Chelsea fans are not happy about it, um, considering we're going to have to go and spend money to bring another left back in. Uh, there's doubts over Ben Chilwell's long-term fitness. There's doubts over Cucurella, you know, believed to be someone that could be moved on this summer. I actually like Cucurella and think he could he could offer something decent to Chelsea uh, in, in a squad role. But it's clear that, you know, want to try and reduce the wage bill again, uh, you know, and, and try and get someone a bit younger. I know Cucurella's only 25, but yeah, it, it's a bit of an odd one for me. I mean, Fabrizio Romano, again, confirming that Chelsea are looking for left backs this summer, as are Manchester United as well, given their obvious problems there. Chelsea looking at left backs in the market for the summer transfer window as Ian Martin could leave the club, I think will, will leave the club. Chelsea monitoring several talented left backs, same as Man United are doing. Now, there's one that I think would be a good signing, Milos Kerkez at Bournemouth, 20 years old. He's coming uh, last summer from AZ Alkmaar, playing very, very well for Bournemouth this season. He's someone that Chelsea have sent scouts to look at, as well as Manchester United as well. Um, he would be someone that would definitely fit the bill for that area. Could he be the Malo Gusto of the left-hand side that we're so desperately looking for? Maybe he could be. Uh, it's, it's difficult to tell. Uh, but again, my knowledge of the left-back market is, is not great. But 
it feels like we've kind of made this situation for ourselves, even though we didn't really need to do it. Now, I get it that, you know, managers aren't going to fancy every player. You know, I, I totally understand that. And if Poch doesn't rate Martson for his system and how he plays, then you as a football club, if this is the guy that you're backing, then you have to back his judgment and and go with it. Um, we all we all we we know you know it's well documented. Martin and an academy player be pure profit on the books. It will help Chelsea with PSR and maybe funding a move for uh, a top centre forward this summer. But yeah, in terms of left backs, you know, looking at younger left backs, so we had Lewis Hall, he's gone. We have we've got Ian Martin, he's probably going to leave. So yeah, I mean, Milos Kerkes would probably be my choice. I don't really know too much else about other talented left backs in and around the age range that we're looking for. But yeah, it feels like it could have been an avoidable situation because we did have two players who could play that role on our books, but clearly not fancied by the manager. And that's football, that's life. And we just have to accept it and roll with it. But it'll be interesting to see who we do go with this summer. But as I said, it feels like a, a situation that we could have definitely avoided as a club. But yeah, guys, that's just my thoughts on the left back situation, Jamal Musiala. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys, on the video, on the news, what your thoughts are on it. And uh, make sure you smash the like, subscribe if you're new around here. And I'll catch you again in another one soon. Up the shelves and peace out, people.